pound puppies. Heathrow. Heathrow. Poor Heathrow was in the pound. He had no family and the only thing he was good at was sniffing. In fact, he was a dog with an extraordinary nose. Where would the crab trees find a home for him? The air traffic controllers at London's busy Heathrow Airport were having a very bad day. Fog had kept a number of planes from flying off, while those from other countries had to be sent to other airports until the weather was better. A bomb scare had kept Concorde grounded. The baggage handlers were on a go slow because they wanted more money and now a strange object had been reported on one of the runways. It appears to be moving, Chief, said one of the controllers on duty. I'll get a security car to go down the runway. With lights flashing, the airport security car sped down the runway while the controllers kept Jumbo circling about the airport waiting to land. The pilots were not pleased. It looks like a dog, Joe, said the driver to his partner. Well, I hope it doesn't bite us, Harry. I've never liked dogs much, said Joe. Good boy. Here then. Come to Harry. The dog looked up from the interesting clump of weeds it had been sniffing vigorously, saw Harry and wagged its tail. Harry rubbed its long, floppy ears and in one quick movement swept the hound under his arm. The dog responded by licking his chin. Now stop that, laughed Harry. What shall we do with him? asked Joe, as Harry bundled the friendly dog into the back of the car. Well, there's no collar or name tag on him, so he'll have to go into the pound, said Harry grimly. It's a shame. He's a nice animal. The pound hadn't always been called the pound. At one time there had been a pink and blue sign outside saying, Happy Haven Home, Boarding Kennels and Cattery, Gladys and Clive Crabtree Props. Give your pet a country holiday. The props should have read proprietors, but no one had been able to spell the word. Of course, the sign was now very faded, and it is doubtful whether even the postman would have been able to tell you where Happy Haven was. Clive was mending the door to old George's pen when the police van pulled up. Morning, Clive, waved the driver, Constable Plum. Got a new recruit for you. He opened the back of the van, and an anxious face with long floppy ears looked out. Where did this one spring from then? Clive put a rope collar and lead around the dog's neck and led him towards one of the empty pens. There was a deafening barking, howling and yapping coming from all around them. They found him on one of the runways at Heathrow, said Plum. Goodness knows how he arrived. With those ears, he probably flew. Well now, said Clive, I think we'll call you Heathrow. Heathrow looked out from behind the wire and thumped his tail. Thanks very much, Plum. They shook hands and PC Plum drove away. You settle in, Heathrow, and I'll get the missus to bring you some dinner. As Clive disappeared towards the house, the barking died down and the dogs in the surrounding pens looked at the newcomer. Heathrow began to feel very uncomfortable. Who are you then? asked one. What's your name? Where'd you come from? Silence! roared a voice. It was old George. He had been at the pound longer than anyone, so they usually did what he said. Now then, young fella, he said to Heathrow. Why don't you tell us about yourself? We're all friends here at the Pound. Some of us have been here a long time, while Molly over there arrived only recently. The other dogs murmured agreement with old George. To be honest, they couldn't really say how long they'd been there. Dogs don't remember days, weeks or months. Where are we? asked Heathrow. And why are we here? This is the pound, said old George. It's the place where they put dogs found lost or homeless or whose family don't want them anymore. 
At this point, poor Molly burst into sobs. That man you saw was Clive. He and Mrs Crabtree are the props, which means they run the pound. They are both good people, but they're not like one's own family. Old George's eyes misted over as he remembered times long ago. I don't think I've had a family, said Heathrow, after a bit. No family? cried the others. Well, I grew up in the kennels where I was born. All my brothers and sisters went off to other places. Families, I suppose, but no one wanted me. Mum said my ears were too big. In the end, I was put on an aeroplane in a crate, and when the plane landed, the crate broke, and I was flung about with lots of baggage. When the baggage handlers came to empty the plane, they didn't see me, so I hopped out and started off down a very long road. And here I am. Just then, Gladys Crabtree waddled down the path with the dinner trolley. As she came, she banged the metal trolley with her wooden spoon and called out, Din Dins, my lovelies! Come, Max! Here, George! Come on, honeypot! Eat up, my beauties! Bang, bang, went the spoon. Bark, yelp, bark, went all the dogs. They loved dinner time. Heathrow, however, was not so sure. Unknown to anyone, even Heathrow himself, he had been blessed with an extraordinary nose. It probably came as a package with his remarkable ears. The result of this was that Heathrow could smell things which other dogs missed, and sniffing his dinner, Heathrow knew there were things in it which he shouldn't be there. But he was very hungry, so he carefully munched all round the things and left them politely on the edge of his dish. Now, 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 my precious, said Gladys. What's all this? Are we leaving our special pills? All new doggies have to have special pills because Mr Crabtree and I don't know where they've been or if they've got nasty parasites. We must eat up our special pills. Heathrow looked at his dish and then looked at Gladys with big, sad eyes. He didn't understand everything she said, but his expression said quite clearly that he wasn't going to eat things and that was final. Over the next three days, the Crabtrees tried 123 disguises for the pills. But, whatever they tried, Heathrow sniffed them out and refused to eat them. In all my born days, I've never known anything like it, said Clive. That dog can smell pills through two centimetres of best steak. What are we going to do with him? Gladys didn't have to reply because at that moment a car drew up outside the house. Out stepped a smart young man in a dark uniform. Good morning, he called to them. I'm Roger Taylor from HM Customs and Excise. I'm looking for a good dog to train for the department, and I've been told you might have something suitable. Clive and Gladys exchanged glances. They were always very careful about letting their charges go to new homes. What sort of training did you have in mind? asked Clive. Well, we need sniffer dogs. We train them for explosives and drugs hidden in cargo and baggage. Obviously the dogs need exceptionally good noses, he laughed. Clive looked at Gladys. Both of them looked towards Heathrow, who thumped his tail. Look no farther, said Gladys. I think we have just what you need. Heathrow went with Roger to the training school for sniffer dogs, and he is now extremely famous. He has sniffed out lots of things hidden inside planes and people's luggage. Best of all, he lives with Roger, Anne and baby Jane, his very own family, at last. <laughs>